Hello everybody and welcome back to Midnight Spook Show. So today I got together with my friend Tyler and we decided that we wanted to make a video um, each going over our top five haunted locations in our country. He is uh, in the UK and I'm here in the United States so we thought it'd be interesting to get the perspective from both sides and um, learn a little bit about each location. His channel name is Real Paranormal UK and I recently did another collab with him. Um, I was featured on his channel, he did an interview of me. So I will link his channel as well as that video that we did together um, in the description doc box down below. And then I will also link uh, his video. To, so if you would like to see his top five haunted locations in the UK, you could check those out. And if you're interested to hear about the top five locations in the United States, stay tuned. So the list that I created, it's not gonna be in any sort of order. I just picked five random locations that I've heard a lot about um, as far as it being haunted. And I'll give you a little bit of history about why it makes it haunted and um, what I know about it. So let's get started. So the first haunted location that I'm gonna to talk to you about is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I was lucky enough to go this year with my husband in the summer. Uh, that was our anniversary trip because we've been married for five years this year. Um, we decided to make a trip out to Gettysburg and see what it was all about. And we were certainly not disappointed as far as the paranormal goes. The history of Gettysburg, as I'm sure some of you may know, is that there was a three-day intense battle um, ending on July 3rd, 1863, and there were thousands of Confederate and Union soldiers that were dead at the end. Um, most of the soldiers were never given a proper burial, so they feel that those restless spirits are still wandering the town. Many of the buildings that are in Gettysburg right now were uh, turned into hospitals for the wounded soldiers. So a lot of those places are, um, of course, filled with energy of soldiers that have made past or were patients there. Um, I know there were about 10,000 troops in total that had gone through the battle within the three day span. So a lot of energy, um, a lot of death. It's a very tragic and sad place, but um, the energy is just phenomenal. So some of the claims that people have in Gettysburg is that they will be touring the battlefields and they will see soldiers walking through the fields. Um, many people are reported, you know, saying, oh, I didn't know there were reenactors that were out on the fields and they come to find out that they in fact weren't reenactors, that they were the spirits of some of the soldiers that were there. Um, some of you may also know that Jenny Wade was the only civilian that was killed in the whole Battle of Gettysburg and her house is right there in town. You can take a tour of it and that location is also rumored to be very haunted. Um, we did take a tour of the house. It was very interesting and uh, that's actually something you can look forward to. It's probably going to be in the winter by the time I get the chance to sit down and go over all of our evidence, um, but we definitely were not disappointed. We had quite a few paranormal experiences while we were there, so highly recommended. Number two on my list is Savannah, Georgia. This city is sometimes known as the hostess city. It has its rumored uh, haunted past because it was built on Indian burial grounds. So they say there are some unsettled um, Native Americans, there was slavery that happened there, as well as epidemics and hurricanes. Um, it has quite a brutal history. One of the locations within Savannah that is known to be the most haunted is the Bonaventure Cemetery. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, there you will find the bird girl. She was there to mark a family plot and she was moved. And I know a lot of people visit their grave and will leave pennies or some sort of gift for her. Um, there's a, another part that is well known um, with the grave of Grace Watson. She was six years old when she passed away and sometimes you were even um, told that you can hear her crying or wailing in the cemetery. One of the most haunted locations within Savannah that is very well known is the Moon River Brewing Company. When it was built in 1821, it was originally stood as a hotel and the hotel welcomed guests from the north. Um, back then they would have been considered Yankees. The locals weren't very appreciative that they were allowing these people to stay in their town, so often they were threatened if they didn't leave the town um, with violence. In 1864, General Sherman marched through with his Union troops, and it remained to be abandoned until about the 1990s. 
Um, in the 90s, it was changed into what we know today as the Moon River Brewing Company. So some of the things that some people say that they have seen while they were here are beer bottles being flown across the room. Um, some people have been pushed or shoved, uh, slapped or pinched by something that they can't see. And in the late 1990s, a woman was even shoved and pushed down the stairs. Um, so yeah, I would say that's uh, pretty creepy. Although it does have a brutal past and has lots of stories of being haunted, it is still somewhere that I would love to visit myself. Um, it's actually on the list of something that my husband and I are wanting to take a trip to maybe for a Halloween vacation coming up in the next couple of years. Third place that I'm going to talk to you about today is the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. Um, some of you may have known that this was what encouraged the movie The Shawshank Redemption and it was built in 1886. So in 1890 when it originally opened it was made for prisoners who had their first time offense um, that were a little bit too violent for being in the regular schools that they had back then. So what they would do is they would accept the prisoners in, allow them to work in a trade program, which would allow them to be released back into society. The thing that I found interesting about this place was that the reason why it was built the way that it is, it sort of looks like a castle. Um, it was known to be a rebirth of some sort for their spiritual lives, and it was trying to drive them away from sin and repent for what they have done in the past. Um, it was home to about 155,000 in prisoners. Because of the overpopulation, the guards were forced to put more than one prisoner in a cell. And because of that, they even included the death row prisoners. So unfortunately, one of the other prisoners died because they were in a double occupancy. Um, one morning, the guards were walking around, checking the cells, and they realized that there was a prisoner missing and they did a search and found that the one prisoner was underneath the bed. He was broken and dead and that was that. One of the things that links back to paranormal activity at the reformatory is back in the 1930s, there was a riot that broke out in the east cell block of the prison. Um, because of this, the guards forced 120 prisoners into 12 solitary confinement rooms for a week without food or water. And because of this, it caused many people to either go insane and it even drove them to death. So because of the mistreatment of the prisoners, uh, a lot of their energies and spirits will lie um, within the walls and still haunt people today. Um, there was some harsh stuff that went on there. A lot of inmates committed suicide by either hanging themselves, um, they just went mad. I, there was even a report of a guy catching himself on fire. So a lot of bad stuff happened in this place. So you could definitely understand why it is known to be one of the most haunted. Um, obviously people who have had a harsh past are known to stick around for whatever reason, whether they have um, unfinished business or whatever it may be. Uh, another harsh reality about prisons like this is that there are about 215 numbered graves that are right outside of the prison. Um, so of course they don't have a, a tombstone with their name on them. They were more known as a number than they were a person. So it definitely has a very sad history. Some of the activity that some people claim that they have felt or heard or seen while they were there are some people have been punched, um, bit, or kicked. I even heard claims that people have felt strange chills while they were standing in some of the cells. Um, the cell doors will close or slam shut and apparitions. Um, so that's pretty terrifying, you know, if you're walking through a place and you are caused physical harm by something you can't see. That's truly something scary. <laughs> Number four on my list is the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. The sanatorium was built in 1910 and its purpose was to help patients who were diagnosed with tuberculosis get a cure for their disease. Um, although it was one of the most advanced in the country at the time, there were still many people that died. Um, so because of overcrowding and overpopulation, there was another building that was added in 1924. Um, because of donations, they were able to help even more patients. So when they opened the new building, they also started to conduct new experiments on patients, sort of as like a last resort um, savior for them in case anything else wasn't working. They tried this because at that point they basically said, well, there's really nothing else left to lose except for your life, <laughs> which they thought they were dying anyways. 
Some of the experiments that they performed on the patients were putting them into a artificial sunroom and they would open them up and allow their lungs to have exposure to artificial light. Another one was a balloon was inserted into the lung and expanded, which obviously could have caused death. Um, just some really crazy experiments that often ended in death. Um, so if the, per if the tuberculosis didn't kill them, it was the experiment that they were doing to try to avoid death, which kind of contradicts itself, but whatever. Um, so there were many, many, many patients that died here. One of the most haunting things to me about this place is that most of the bodies didn't leave through the front gates that they came in. They actually left through a chute that they called the body chute. And basically what would happen is they would have um, like an underground railroad type thing going on where the bodies were thrown down a chute and they would be at it or they would fall into like a cable car type thing and then they would be taken away. Um, the reason why they did this is because they felt that they didn't want the other patients to see how many other patients were dying because they felt that their mental health was just as important as their physical health. And them seeing more bodies that were dead than were surviving, I think that would have really um, messed with their minds because it just gave them less hope of actually making it out alive. So as you can understand, because of all of the crazy experiments that were going on and the agony and just the overall traumatic experiences that they had while they were here, their spirits still lie within the walls. So in 1961, Waverly Hills officially closed their doors and a year later, a new facility moved in called Woodhaven Geriatric Sanatorium. Um, this was allow this allowed older people to come in um, that may have been suffering from certain ailments and they were often mistreated and abused. Um, some of the patients had even underwent uh, electroshock therapy, which was at the time um, meant to help cure a variety of ailments, um, and that failed. 1982, the doors officially closed, and it still remains closed to this day. Um, this is one place that I have seen frequently on Ghost Hunters. They have gotten some really crazy uh, evidence there. Um, it's just extreme. Some of the things that a lot of people went through, you can only imagine, um, you know, their energy being there and wanting to pass on, um, you know, what they went through. And I, they probably feel like they're stuck. So they haunt the place and anybody who may be visiting it. Some of the hauntings related to this place are obviously the spirits who were mistreated and tortured while they were there. Um, their spirit still lies within the walls. There's a specific room and floor, uh, floor five, and it's room 502. Um, some people have been known to just climb to this room and jump out of the window to commit suicide. There have also been um, reports of people seeing uh, apparitions move through the windows and nurses. I believe there was a nurse's station on this floor as well. So there's quite a few stories located to this specific location. Um, if you get a chance, please do your research on it. There's just so much. I wish I could talk about it, but I would like to move on to place number five. My number five location and the last in my list is New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. Um, this has a pretty interesting history. Um, it was founded by the French. So New Orleans is known for its 300 years of Spanish, African, and Cajun history. Um, and as well as some aspects of voodoo. Uh, there are quite a few places that you could visit while you're there, and I believe all of them are open to this day. One of the most recognizable names uh, coming from New Orleans would be Marie Laveau. Um, you may have often heard of it as Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo. She was a voodoo practitioner in the French Quarter, and uh, she was feared by many, many people, um, but also respected by others. One thing Marie Laveau was known for was was um, tending to people who were on their deathbed and also helping people to keep, get, or get rid of a lover. 
You can visit Marie Laveau's tomb in St. Louis Cemetery, which is also known to be one of the most haunted locations in New Orleans. So it is known that if you go to her tomb and petition her, um, your wish, whatever it is that you're wishing may come true. She accepts gifts in the form of white rum. Um, some people have left cigars or coins of some sort. And um, it was known that whenever she died, that her spirit was re-entered into um, the river of life and she moved on to an adjacent realm to ours. So other than the cemetery, there are a few other haunted locations that you can visit today. One of the things that people are claiming that they see is a guy at the Lafitte's blacksmith shop. Um, it's a tavern now, but it was originally used to uh, smuggle goods or money or whatever back then and some people say that they see an apparition that shows up uh, with a hat waiting to loot you. One of the haunted locations in New Orleans itself is called Hotel Monte Leone. Um, it is one of the only hotels that is still owned by the family in the United States. Um, some people have claimed to see Ernest Hemingway or uh, Tennessee Williams sit down at the bar for a drink. Uh, the hotel is also known for its carousel bar. Um, and there was a person who used to work for the hotel called Red, who is also known to wander the halls. Um, some of the guests have also seen doors slam or lock um, and an elevator even stopping and opening on the wrong floor. Uh, they suspect that that may be children at play. One last location that I'm going to talk about in New Orleans is the La Lurie uh, Mansion. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, it was owned by Delphine Lulery, and she had a three-story mansion. On the top floor, she kept a dark and bloody secret. Um, she would keep servants chained up to the walls, and there were even dismembered body parts on the floor. Um, the reason why this was discovered is because there was a fire that broke out in the building, and somebody went to the top floor and discovered her secret. Um, if you had watched the American history or American horror story, sorry, um, about the coven, I think Kathy Bates, uh, character was based off of her. I don't think I've watched a single American horror story through the entire way, so I couldn't tell you what it was, but, um, I'm pretty sure that's what it's about. So you can only imagine that the energy and the restless souls that were tortured um, lie within the walls of this place. It is a private residence. It's not somewhere that you could visit, but you can, um, you know, go past and see the location of where it was. So I think that would be really crazy. So New Orleans itself has some really brutal, um, bloody history, uh, not only with the war that had gone through there, but um, just with all of the other happenings around the town. I can only imagine the energy that's in the air. Uh, and this is actually another place that is on uh, our bucket list to visit. Um, so hopefully we can make it there soon. I got a lot of recommendations, so we're definitely looking forward to doing that sometime in the future. As a recap, the top five places that I chose were Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Savannah, Georgia, the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio, um, the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Kentucky and New Orleans itself. So I hope you enjoyed the five locations that I picked as the most haunted in the United States. Please make sure you go check out Tyler's video so you can see the top five locations that he chose for the United Kingdom and uh, just check out his channel in general. If this is something that you'd like to see on my channel, please give me a thumbs up or a comment below. Um, I love reading everybody's comments on what they think about certain places. Uh, there were just too many to narrow it down to five. Um, I think I started with like a list of 20 that I wanted to talk about, but I knew that this video was going to be way too long, so we just chose five. That's about it. I'm just going to leave it off here. So I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.